but leave it to a favorite outlet of the left to expose those assertions as utterly false. A new report by the Huffington Post proclaims everyone got the Pulse Massacre story completely wrong. Details how the trial of Mateen's wife, Noor Salman, revealed his assault at the nightclub was a crime of random opportunity and driven by an allegiance to ISIS. Joining us now with Reaction Counterterrorism Analyst, Lisa Daftari. Lisa, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. So my first question is, why is it that whenever we have some sort of terror attack like this, God forbid, on American soil uh, or overseas, quite frankly, does the left and the media automatically go to finding a motive that has nothing to do with the actual situation? Yeah, that's that's the question here right now is to say we had plenty of evidence to know that this man uh, pledged allegiance to ISIS. He said on Facebook and at other times that his actions were in retaliation for the bombings in Syria. Yet, because this was at a gay nightclub, it became a hate crime. Question becoming, why uh, is the media so quick to mute or to erase the jihadi narrative? Is it because we want to be so politically correct and not marginalize, uh, you know, the, the LGBT community here? Or is it because they truly don't want to or want to ignore the real threat here, which is that there are Americans who are being recruited, who are pledging allegiance, who live right here in the United States? And the, the answer to that is that if you are fearful of uh, perhaps being insensitive to a small minority group, Group, you're being more insensitive to American, the American people and really belittling them when you are not thinking of, of the larger security issue right. here. Well, you bring up that narrative. I want to put up on the screen a couple of quotes from uh, mainstream media members in the aftermath of the Pulse nightclub shooting. Daily Beast Tim Tiemann said at the time, let's say it plainly. This was a mass slaying aimed at LGBT people. This was a homophobic act. Uh, New Republic's Jeet here also arguing the same thing. The Orlando massacre was undeniably a homophobic hate crime. Uh, and then here, U.S. News James Robbins says numerous subsequent reports that Omar had strong homosexual urges paints a picture of a young man trying to reconcile his inner feelings with his strongly homophobic Muslim culture. But now that we've been through the trial uh, of the wife, we're seeing that this had nothing to do with his actual motive. Explain that. When you, this, this attack first happened, right. you had some in-depth reporting, uh, uh, exclusive reporting on the motive in this attack. Yeah, absolutely. And why the myopic view? Why does this need to check just one box? Why do we have to say workplace violence or the, the person was mentally unstable or whatever it may be? And the, the, the answer here is that the person who does pledge allegiance to ISIS, who does have this just jihadi uh, point of view, does beat his wife, which we came to, to now find out. He does probably hate gays, which he randomly came upon this nightclub. So why this narrow view to shut out or to describe Predator or preclude any kind of narrative. And now that we have uh, almost like extracted the narrative that this was a hate crime, mm -hmm. why, why was this, why was there such a push to get the, rid of the real narrative, which is was jihadism? The, the one thing that I did report on right after this was uh, a, an Al Qaeda media, um, basically on, on their online uh, news outlet, they put out this kind of alert to wannabe jihadis, telling right. them, if you are are going to launch an attack, make sure that you don't do it on a minority group, because piggybacking off of this attack, they thought Americans will only take the blame themselves if it's a hate crime. So make sure if you are to launch an attack mm. that it's in the name of jihad and it's only against white Americans so that they know that this was purely jihad. They want the credit. They want it to be branded. And we allowed them in this situation for two years to get away with a false narrative. Well, we, we're running out of, time, out of time, but just re going over this case, it seems like looking at all of the facts when the warning signs were ignored uh, about jihadism by a number of law enforcement agencies, uh, and here we are now, as you mentioned, with the narrative for years on end being about a hate crime rather than addressing the real issue uh, and trying to prevent it in the future. Final word. Absolutely. And I think the, 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 the false, uh, you, you know, kind of uh, thing that's coming out about this now, even in the Huffington Post piece, is that this is stuff that came to light after the trial. And that's absolutely not true. We knew all of these uh, pieces of evidence when the, the crime happened, that he pledged allegiance to uh, ISIS, that he was doing this to retaliate for the crimes that so-called crimes that America's committing uh, in Syria. And this was all really to just take away from the real narrative that this was jihad and this was Islamic. 
terrorism. All right, well, Lisa Daftari, one of the best. Thank you for coming on.